I'm Tom Bearden. Uh, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. I have a master's degree in nuclear engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. I have a BS in mathematics from Northeast Louisiana State with a minor in electronic engineering. A retired Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army. Basically, I do research and uh, also theoretical research in over-unity electromagnetic devices and also in some specialized uh, medical treatment therapies. How did you get started in the field of alternate energy technology? We started in the field of alternate energy technology, of course, with this concern in the 70s. In the mid-70s, or early 70s, as you recall, we had uh, quite a crisis in uh, oil and energy and so forth. And Particularly at that time, energy became uppermost in the minds of lots and lots of folks in the United States and actually throughout the Western world. We had been working beginning in this area at that time, but at the time we also began to take a much greater and much stronger interest in what could be done about the provision of electrical energy. And so we really started very serious work at that time to look at electromagnetics to look at the the way you actually use electrical energy in an electric circuit uh, how you provide the energy to the circuit where it gets the energy from and if there's anything you can do to number one increase the energy or number two get some for free and uh, number three then use it to power a load so that you really could do it cheaper and cleaner where did you get the ideas from that you're currently working <coughs> The current research that we're doing has really consumed almost uh, 33 years total. We really started doing, at that time we didn't know you called it this, but we started doing what's called foundations work. That is, we look at the fundamental concepts that are being used in science and in electrodynamics, and we begin to review what does that really mean? What are you really talking about? What are you really doing? When we build these circuits or we build these devices and we power them, what happens? The problems we were running into is that the electrodynamic theory, electrical physics, part of it was put together over 100 years ago, the primary material. And since that hundred and something years, we've learned an awful lot more about the basics and the fundamentals. And it turns out along the way, lots of errors were made in founding the present electrodynamics. And certainly, I'm not the first one to ever say that or point that out. Foundations scientists do that quite regularly. But it seemed to me that if you were going to try to build a system that could find a free energy source for itself, like putting a paddle wheel in a river or like putting a, a windmill to tap the wind energy, you had to find some flows of free energy electrically or electromagnetically and you had to be able to extract the energy from that and use it. So we set about to see what does modern physics say about how you get the energy in the electrodynamic circuits and how you actually can flow it over to the load and use it. We found that quite a few things that were taken for granted had long since been falsified and that there were some holes in the theory, there were some free rivers of energy that one could begin to extract energy from. For a long time, we had a great deal of trouble identifying how in the world one would extract energy from the vacuum when today the vacuum is known not to be an emptiness at all, but to be filled with enormous uh, flows of energy, flux, energy flux. Uh, that work took many years to find exactly how to do that, and it turned out to be so simple that uh, it's laughable. It's with ridiculous ease. A simple dipole, separation of two charges which we use in every generator and uh, battery and so forth that we make, already does that and extracts enormous amounts of energy. We found that a uh, great portion of the energy that's actually extracted from the vacuum by our present systems had been discarded by the early theorists, that they had made mistakes in the interpretation of their own calculations. And so we pulled those out of the literature and we held them up and we said, if we correct this with what we know today, What's the new view? What's the new extended electrodynamics? It turns out that they had modified